Hello everybody and welcome back to the Moshix mainframe channel. This is Moshix. If you lived and worked with computers in the 80s or 90s, I'm sure that one way or another you were exposed to Pascal. Uh, mostly for people who were at the time uh, working with 8-bit uh, and 16-bit computers, they would have been exposed to something like Turbo Pascal, as you can see here on the screen. Uh, I I was playing with Turbo Pascal and I think everybody else and I also started to uh, learn C with uh, Turbo C from Borland uh, amazing company they had I even liked the editor back then and this was amazing to have such a fast Pascal and uh, and the later C compiler on a on an IBM PC or a 16-bit computer was pretty amazing and and so it was a very popular very fashionable back in the 80s and uh, and so IBM like everybody else started offering Pascal compilers for their uh, mainframe operating systems MVS and uh, VM370 and then of course MVSSP and VMSP uh, they did the same by the way for basic uh, you wouldn't think right today in 2024 uh, to write a serious uh, production application for banking or anything like that or for insurance in basic but people did back in the 70s and 80s and uh, there was demand for it and so IBM offered uh, compilers for basic and for Pascal and um, what happened is that several uh, weeks ago uh, somebody found a, an old tape of Pascal VS as you can see here uh, and that's an important distinction, Pascal slash VS, and I'll come to that in a second. And so somebody found a tape of that and sent it to me, and uh, I was able to install it on, uh, on our MVS 3.8, as well as on VM. And, and today we're going to look at uh, this compiler. Once I had the tape converted to uh, digital in uh, Hercules AWS format, it was actually pretty simple to... Uh, to get it loaded into MVS 3.8 TK5, as you can see here. So these are the um, the data sets that uh, the tape includes. So let's look into this data sets to see what the compiler includes. So um, there are some, the mo actually one of the really interesting things is that it includes C lists that you can put into your uh, TSO. Um, so you can actually invoke the compiler from uh, from uh, TSO or ISPF interactively. Um, actually, I didn't do this step, but uh, yeah, that works just fine. So there is a way to include it. And if you remember the IS the ISPF, not the open source one that was created by uh, uh, Wally McLaughlin, uh, but the one that the real one that IBM still sells. Uh, that has a foreground uh, and background feature and uh, you could put this into the foreground and then of course compile directly from there as you can see here um, so uh, actually quite easy to uh, put this on uh, on uh, on ISPF uh, it could also be ISPF on TK5 obviously to have a foreground uh, uh, compile option uh, kind of like this one if you bear with me um, so this would be here, this foreground option. So we could easily integrate it here and make it uh, option Pascal number two. But uh, I didn't do this step for myself because I'm mostly just doing batch um, comp compilation and then uh, link and go. And uh, let's go again to, um, to Pascal. So we have the C list, then we have um, uh, this uh, package um, uh, content, uh, kind of like a package uh, label or, or uh, SBOM, as we would call it today, uh, software build of materials. So it shows us here we have an install um, uh, JCL, then uh, that's how you read it into uh, from tape into the system. Then uh, we also have the compiler source, so that's a good thing. It comes with the compiler source if uh, if that's what you want, and then um, and then everything else that, that it shows here. So then we have the link library, and um, I'm going to get into this in a moment again. But uh, Pascal VS was actually the second uh, incarnation of Pascal for the IBM mainframe. There's also an IBM Pascal 
but not IBM Pascal VS. Pascal, there's IBM Pascal, and then there's IBM slash, uh, IBM Pascal slash VS. The first incarnation, IBM Pascal, required the runtime library uh, to run programs, versus uh, IBM Pascal VS, which is what we're looking at today, is, does not require, does not in fact have a runtime library. It compiles everything you need into the uh, executable, kind of like Go does today everything you uh, need in go is compiled right into the uh, into it executables kind of static compilation which which is the reason why go programs are always so huge because everything is compiled into them but then you don't need libraries you can just run them wherever you want uh, same idea with pascal slash vs from ibm um, so we have here uh, the link library which are uh, the pascali here that's the actual compiler uh, as you can see here, pretty small, and then uh, some uh, uh, some uh, other objects that are being called by the uh, by the front end uh, comp of the compiler. Then we have uh, uh, load libraries. Basically, those will be the um, that will be the link uh, time um, library. And then you have uh, all the lib the messages, which is actually helpful if you wanted to um, localize it into other languages. I don't know German or or uh, French or or Hebrew or something else. Uh, then uh, they provide also the compilation um, uh, and then compilation and Go and compilation link compilation link and Go procedures. So you can put this into your uh, uh, store procedures uh, library, which of course on TK5 is sys2.proclib. And um, then you have uh, a debug library, which is very helpful when you want to debug. And then there is, um, I put in here my own um, nQueen program, which we'll look at in a second. And then I think they include this. No, this is not included. It's a prime number generator, but I think uh, this is included and um, uh, that's an included program uh, that prints numbers in block letters in uh, in in uh, nice epsidic so that's the whole distribution of the uh, pascal vs pretty simple pretty small <laughs> it uh, just takes uh, i mean just a link library is very small let's see um, just one extent uh, so thirteen thousand uh, bytes and um, and then the link library is, uh, of course, bigger. Uh, 49 extents, 49 tracks on a 3350. So that's just a couple of megabytes, uh, two or three megabytes, so pretty small. And um, and so I have this installed. And But before we go and run this, I wanted to give you a little bit of a history of why Pascal VS was such an exciting find for me personally. One of the most amazing things about Pascal VS is that it was actually used to write very important system software. Now, uh, in 2024 today, you wouldn't think of using Pascal to write system software such as uh, operating systems or important subsystems of operating systems uh, such as uh, networking, but that's exactly what happened. And uh, I knew that the TCPIP stack implementation for VMSP, which came in the uh, mid 80s, uh, famously known as FAL, and I don't remember exactly what FAL stands for, but uh, was written uh, mostly in Pascal VS. And, but I didn't know how that came about, so I asked the question on uh, our Moshix mainframe channel and uh, on Facebook, and I, I asked the TCP stack for VMSP was written mostly in Pascal VS. Does anyone here know why it was written in Pascal VS or where it was written? In uh, Was it written at IBM Endicott in New York or was it written uh, and why was it written in Pascal? Um, so there's a whole long story about that um, and I found some document here which also mentions the IBM uh, Triangle uh, Research Park, Park in uh, Raleigh, North Carolina. And there is a person uh, who is very familiar with this and he answered, Ross Patterson. If you're watching this video, thank you for answering, uh, Ross. Uh, he says, I was the shared TCPIP 
project manager in the early 90s. To, and he says that the first TCP IP stack for VM was called WISCnet because it was written at the University of Wisconsin by one Larry Landweber. Uh, in his research group, maybe a professor. And uh, it was available to academic sites from University of Wisconsin and also though through one of the IBM release paths, which is a PRPQ. Now, PRPQ is a special kind of software that IBM would, will sell, uh, which doesn't necessarily have to be written by IBM. There's other such uh, software and, and very important software uh, that we still know today sometimes started like this. Um, it could have, written, could have been written by the IBM employee on their spare time or by an outside firm. Uh, uh, Kix kind of started this way, IBM uh, DB, IMS DB, the DL1 database kind of started like that and many other components were contributed by others and then IBM first uh, reluctantly started to distribute it for people who ask for it without any guarantee or, uh, or even support at the beginning and then eventually um, they started selling it and uh, took over support for it. Maybe they even rewrote parts of it or all of it, I don't know. But So some of these folks, uh, Ross Peterson sa says here, some of these folks, including Matt Korn, and I don't know if that is the corn of corn shell, uh, kind of uh, could be, the time could be right, I don't know, wound up at IBM uh, uh, Watson Research in, uh, in New York. And uh, uh, there, uh, uh, Matt Korn uh, and others uh, released uh, 5798 and 98FAL, which is the TCP IP stack for VMSP. Very famous for this uh, product number here. Now, Korn, Appleman, Alinsky, and Jakov Rechter, who is uh, in the Hall of Fame of the, um, of the uh, uh, Mountain View uh, computer museum and also I think could have been that he received the Turing Award. We'll, we'll find out about it in a second. Uh, I also saw recently an interview, uh, Markov Rector, who originally immigrated to the US from the Soviet Union, uh, had influential roles in the code. Um, the code was then ported to MVS, as a, so it, uh, this Pascal VS code was then also used for TCP IP on MVS in part by, of course, writing the lower levels that resemble stuff like VMCF, because it was relying on the VMCF communication facility, which is a way for virtual machines in VM370 to communicate with each other, um, and, uh, and which was later then um, replaced by IUCV. Uh, Korn and Appleman later won the American Online, where Appleman was inspired by VM's network message and built uh, amazingly, uh, AOL Messenger. So uh, you can see here, Pascal VS uh, had quite an influence. The IBM TCP IP products moved to IBM Communications in uh, Raleigh once they figured out that if they didn't kill TCP IP, it might threaten SNA. Uh, yeah, there's uh, IBM didn't really like and want TCP IP because they had staked, of course, a lot of money and a lot of resources on their uh, systems network architecture, which is a, a different uh, way to communicate and uh, a different networking protocol. And, uh, and so IBM at the beginning didn't want to endorse open standards. Uh, but of course, uh, the world forced uh, open standards on IBM, and today, of course, IBM is uh, is a champion of open standards to some extent, I would say, where, when it makes commercial sense. Uh, they tried for a while to do so, but then failed, and uh, Alan Hancock's successor quipped that he, that he wished that all his mistakes made so much money for IBM. <laughs> Very funny. So, um, so uh, it looks like um, the... Uh, TCP, IP, TCP IP stack for VM, SP, and then later from the MVS was written in Pascal VS. And, um, and, uh, and then I asked, but why Pascal? Why not C? And uh, Ross answered, he doesn't know the answer, but he has his own suspicion. So that's Ross Patterson's uh, opinion. That's not a checked fact. I didn't check this fact. Would have been an obvious choice, but there wasn't an easily obtainable C compiler for VM at the time. IBM eventually released the Whitesmith C for VM and MVS, but not soon enough. And I actually have this compiler, and I'll eventually do a video about the uh, first IBM C compiler and there's a lot of people working right now on uh, resuscitating the IBM C compiler uh, because we have the source for it and we could eventually use this um, uh, potentially for MBS 3.8 because it's in the open source. 
Um, so assembler, uh, uh, which is the native language, of course, of MVS and VM, not just of VM, uh, according to Ross, was never an option because um, he was a, he was a computer science professor and didn't want to uh, teach assembler to his students or her students, and uh, and VS Pascal was uh, easily available, and. Um, and as uh, Mr. Professor Newt uh, observed when he wrote Tech, was that uh, everybody's second favorite language other than C was uh, Pascal. So that's uh, that's the um, that's the story on why Pascal was used for uh, implementing the TCP IP stack for VM and VMBS. Um, and then um, I found out also um, some more stuff. Uh, I found out. Um, that um, Barry Appleman uh, says a small team of developers produced TCP IP stack for all IBM, IBM operating systems, including, I think, AIX. And, um, and here is also a video about from uh, Mr. Uh, Jakov Rechter, uh, as I mentioned, who came in from the Soviet Union. And uh, he gives a very interesting speech here about writing networking software. He was at IBM for a long time, and uh, I don't remember exactly where he is today. So, uh, famous uh, compiler uh, has uh, had influence all the way to AOL Messenger. And uh, so, let's look into the compiler and let's, uh, let's compile some stuff. All right, so we are on MVS uh, 3.8 TK5 by Rob Prince, which has uh, slowly become my main working environment when I work with MVS. And uh, of course, with the amazing open source ISPF uh, environment, uh, and which makes it real uh, joy to work with. Even though I, I haven't completely abandoned TK4, um, I still like TK4 quite a lot. But yeah, I'm a much improved uh, uh, subsystem such as uh, ISPF, a rev edit has been improved quite a bit, even though it still has some bugs, as we will see in a moment. And, um, and overall, uh, I think a much better environment. There's also some new innovations, uh, such as uh, uh, an amazing web server by Mike Rayborn, with whom I've had a lot of correspondence and uh, work with him on uh, on his new version uh, 2.0 and 3.0. But we'll look into that in separate videos. Let's go into Pascal right now. So I have your data set with some um, Pascal jobs. Let's start with a, with a test job. And... Um, and I suggest we first run it uh, with output going to the um, to the spool system, to the JS2 spool, and then later on we run it uh, with a beautiful printout on green bar green bar paper with uh, the uh, I, the uh, virtual 1403 printer that uh, I'm running on a system with software developed by uh, the amazing. Uh, Matthew Wilson. So let's uh, run this right now and see what comes out. Um, region is 2.5 megabytes, which should be enough. I think the compiler only needs uh, 512 kilobytes, uh, <laughs> which always makes me uh, laugh in amazement uh, how little uh, memory and uh, storage and, and disk storage compilers uh, needed uh, back 40 years ago. Let's remember that this is a 45 year old compiler, 40, maybe 46 years old compiler. Uh, it's from 1979 or 1980. So let's execute this and see what comes out. Job 40, as you can see, I haven't been using this particular MVS uh, image much. And let's start a second panel. Let's go to the output viewer. And here's our job 40. And we can see that compilation went without any problems. Uh, return code zero. The linkage editor didn't encounter any problems as at all also. And then it was executed without issues too. Um, so you can see here we have a Pascal VS procedure and uh, uh, which are which is stored in the data sets we looked at before, um, the one from the installation tape. Uh, this one, every, all of these are from the installation tape. So, uh, and then let's go see the first output of the compiler. 
So this was, uh, uh, let's first look at the compilation time. So half a second um, for the compilation on a machine that's actually quite slow. Uh, so very, uh, very uh, fast uh, compilation times in on today's machines. I am sure that if we had executed this on a on a period correct mainframe from the late 70s or early 80s, it would have taken maybe two, three, four seconds. Okay, so here we see this is the output from the Pascal uh, VS compiler. So Pascal slash VS, and VS by the way stands for virtual uh, virtual storage. IBM was very excited in the 70s that they had created a virtual memory for their operating systems, and of course with the support of the hardware, um, with the dynamic address translation, that they started calling everything VS for virtual storage. And storage, remember, in the IBM uh, language means memory, not disk storage. So uh, this, uh, to read it correctly in today's uh, easily understandable terms, it would be Pascal slash virtual memory, which means it can use virtual memory. Um, and so release 2.2, which is the one that we are using uh, today. And there are some artifacts here which are not really part of the output, but that's what uh, RevEdit, our output viewer, puts in because it doesn't properly interpret everything. Uh, but uh, just after this, we'll look at a beautiful printed green bar output uh, on uh, the uh, 1403 virtual printer that I'm running on one of my systems as a service, a free service to the community and written by, uh, by uh, our amazing uh, contributor, Matthew Wilson, with input from me and testing from me and some contributions from me. Um, so uh, here it compiles the, the program. Uh, but this is going to look much nicer in the moment we look at it on real uh, on a real listing, and uh, then we should see some uh, so the cross reference obviously very important in uh, debugging, and uh, all this is I mean again it's going to look much nicer, and then we have the pseudo assembly, um, which shows us what um, statements assembler statements would result from each. Um, from each uh, Pascal source statement. So you have for i from uh, 1 to length of s. Um, and so as you can see here, this translates into this kind of assembly. And um, I know that some people always uh, turn, uh, you know, I'll get upset when I say assembler. They always correct me and say it's assembly. Yeah, they're right. Uh, but a lot of people nowadays just call it assembler language. Um, and here's the output, so Moshix mainframe. So um, I suggest we look at this in a much nicer format by running it again with uh, listing uh, going to the virtual 1403 printer. And I have, of course, videos uh, which I put in the description below this video on how to install and use their beautiful virtual 1403 printer that you'll see in a second. So we put this into A, message class A, and run it again. And uh, well, maybe we run it as uh, P for print. And uh, let's see what the job is. Job number 41. And now let's go check out the beautiful green bar. OK, so uh, here we are at, uh, on 1403.bitnet. Uh, Dot systems. If you don't have an account, you can go sign up there, and you can send all your output from MVS or VM, or uh, or even uh, DOS VS to this uh, virtual printer, and then you can come here and look at the output online. So uh, we find here that job 41 is already here, 24 pages, and now let's look at it in all its beauty. Let's make this a bit bigger. Okay, and uh, we don't really need this. Okay, so, wow, I'm always amazed uh, what amazing uh, system that Matthew Wilson uh, uh, created. And I'll put a link to this in the description below the video. So you can see here, this is exactly how uh, listings used to look like in the 80s, 70s, 80s, uh, even 90s. Uh, and we know because I took this from a real uh, listing that I have from the late 70s and uh, and then Matthew Wilson painstakingly went and recreated everything from the from the tractor holes on the side from the form uh, naming 
the alignment uh, everything is there and uh, I mean this is just amazing if you don't use 1403 for your listings um, then you're really missing out on something so uh, here's our job Pascal VS as we said in our um, in our JCL um, we could of course also put more information here but uh, 25th of May 2024 and uh, we just looked at it before as you can see that's exactly the same thing but now, of course, without all the strange artifacts that uh, the output viewer on the terminal gives us. So this is, of course, much nicer. As you can see here, Pascal VS, uh, again, um, for virtual system storage, virtual memory, uh, page one. And uh, what you can see here is that the Pascal compiler puts the uh, source code beautifully into this uh, kind of uh, uh, rectangle here and it gives us the exact position so that really helps also with finding bugs um, and uh, you have the uh, card numbers here on the right side in case you drop your stack of cards here's the the whole um, the whole uh, source code and that's the end of it and here is the amp input that i gave uh, to the program moshix mainframes here we have the cross-reference listing, which now looks very, very nice, very readable. So we have the variable here and uh, what it's used for, where it's used. <coughs> Excuse me. And um, and then uh, all the variables are listed in the cross-reference. And then we have the pseudo assembler assembly listing, um, where we have. Uh, uh, the definition so this typically wouldn't directly assemble if you put this into assembly but it's pretty close and it uses a very simple uh, 360 uh, maybe 370 uh, assembly uh, language not uh, not the more modern one because of course uh, that's the assembly that existed back then but even then it used very very simple instructions not the more complex ones so people could follow exactly what it is but that's not exactly the assembly that that's generated it's that's why it's called pseudo assembly it helps you debug if there's issues and for every statement in the source code it prints here which statement and also which card so you can find it in the in the input and then uh, what exactly happens very nice now some um, some IBM compilers almost all IBM compilers uh, produce a pseudo assembly uh, some do a better job some just to produce it all without like the PL1 the first versions of PL1 compilers were not very good at putting in the source statement above uh, they just put in a number uh, a line number then you have to go back up and down all the time to check out which uh, which statement is in which line and what generated uh, which assembly was generated but uh, later on uh, they also got much better but that's a beautiful thing um, that you can see exactly which statement generated which uh, more or less which uh, assembly uh, statement and then we have the external symbol dictionary uh, for the uh, stuff that's used for the uh, for the uh, compilation and then uh, here we have IBM 3.7 instruction uh, usage which is also very nice which uh, you know in a typical program which uh, as uh, which s370 instruction is mostly used i think that's a good uh, it's a good sample to see uh, which instructions are used the most and uh, it looks like store is used the most uh, followed closely by load and load address um, obviously those are going to be used quite a bit um, and store multiple etc already much much less so move character i'm surprised how little that's used here um and the move immediate uh, more um and uh the branch instructions obviously are also used quite a bit and uh and then subtract register um etc so interesting uh sample here from a very normal uh program source code see which instructions are used most on s370 uh, really like this and then we have the uh, linkage editor doing its job uh, no problems found so authorization code is zero so it's not uh, specially authorized and here we have the uh, output um, uh, and it looks actually nicer on the screen and if you look at it from far it will say moshix mainframes 
So uh, this is one program. Let, now it's run a, a real, um, a, a little bit more complicated program. And as you know, whenever I look at compilers, whether on the mainframe or on uh, DEC systems or even on uh, on other operating systems such as Linux and uh, Windows, etc., I always use uh, the Enqueen problem solver as a reference because I know this problem well. I can code it in many languages, and it kind of gives me a good feeling for the abilities and capabilities of the compiler. And by the way, there is also a video I have about the uh, Pascal compiler for MVS and VM by Bernd Oppolzer, which I reviewed about two years ago. And I will also put a link about that in the description below the video you're watching. Uh, and I also um, uh, created a, uh, the same uh, uh, N problem, N queen solver, in Pascal for that compiler. And then we've actually found some bugs in that compiler, which then later on burned up also solved because uh, they came out because of the uh, program I had written. So let's go and check it out. Okay, let's go get another uh, another uh, source code. Uh, this is the Enqueen solver. And um, well, let's make this go to the spooler because we already know how the output of the compiler looks like. Um, and um, so that's just a short uh, Pascal program to solve for uh, for the N queen problem. And we'll do it with, uh, let's say, with 12 uh, queens on a 12 by 12 board. Let's run this. Actually, you know what? Um, let's do it with 13, so we have time to go uh, to go check it out in the uh, during the execution. Um, and uh, yeah, so uh, let's make it 15 actually 14. It's quite a slow system, so I'm sure this will take a while. Um, uh, so let's run this, and we call it uh, Q for Queen. Okay, and then we go here and we say uh, uh, M and then the monitor, G, and we should now see, yeah, here it is running. So here's our job running and this is the CPU it's using. Obviously it's using all of the, uh, all of the GPU. Uh, as you can see here, it's, uh, we have two CPUs on the system and so um, which you can do with MVS 3.8. You can run two CPUs. Uh, not everything is going to run 100% uh, fine. There's going to be some squirrely things, um, but for the most part, 96% they will run fine. And so that's what I'm running here. So I can see Herc01, that's me, the user, and Herc01Q, that's our solver, and that's running. Um, so you can see that's beautiful the monitoring software, so you can see exactly what's going on. Uh, and CPU 42%, uh, it's because we have two CPUs, so that's using uh, almost uh, one full CPU and then a little bit of the other one uh, from all the rest of the software running on this mainframe. Uh, we can also see how much paging is going on. Um, and uh, we actually have a specific paging uh, system uh, view. Uh, page data set so let's go here and let's see uh, what the ones they really care about are the page out uh, the page out counts and the swap out because um, MVS 308 swaps out whole address systems to disk and not just pages uh, which later on became uh, much less of a thing you wouldn't swap out whole address spaces so much anymore um, but uh, in, in, in the late 70s, they were still swapping whole address spaces out. Uh, nowadays, Windows, Linux, they don't really swap out whole address spaces. They just swap individual pages out. And you always want to count the, the page out, especially in Linux, because page in is also used for reading in, for instance, the binaries of a program, etc. So that's what we want to measure here. Um, and uh, uh, we can see here there's very little... Uh, paging activity. Well, let's go back and look at uh, G. Let's see if it's still running. Yeah, it's still running. And uh, let's wait for it to finish. Or what we can actually do is uh, terminate it and start a new one with only just a few um, queens so that 
it finishes earlier. Where is it? At? This is the one executing, so let's cancel it. Okay, so that's cancelled. And let's go again and run it with, let's say with uh, 10. That should be done in a second or so. Let's run it. Job 43. And let's check out the output. Uh, 43 is already here. So that's, uh, that went well. So you can see here, uh, compilation without issues, linkage without issues, and then of course the execution without issues. Uh, let's see what it says. Of course it's a little bit of a larger program than the one before, but that's fine. Um, and uh, where is the output? Uh, I can't see the output. Maybe we should run it actually with the virtual uh, 1403 printer. Let's do that. Job 44, let's switch. Okay, it's here. So job 44, let's open it and uh, let's make it bigger. And we'll go straight down. And here is the output. So you can see um, it's just a RevEdit uh, output viewer that sometimes has some issues. I think actually previous versions worked a little bit better. But here is uh, 10 queens on a 10 by 10 uh, chessboard uh, has 724 solutions. So eight has famously 92 solutions, so we know it's correct. And um, yeah, yeah, so that uh, that is the beauty of this compiler. Works beautifully, and uh, and I'm. Quite happy to be showing this for preservation purposes. Obviously, it's proprietary code by IBM, so it can be distributed uh, because they own it. But I wanted to show this for uh, distribution purposes. Now, this compiler has one more trick up its sleeve. And as I mentioned before, this compiler was actually used to write uh, also the TCP IP stack for VMSP. So I want to show uh, this very same compiler also working on uh, VM. Uh, 370. It works on VM 370 just uh, just as well, and um, and uh, have a run on that system. Okay, so we are on uh, on this uh, VM system, and as you can see, I have here on this uh, disk, uh, mini disk, I have uh, uh, the Pascal compiler. It's the exact same compiler, and uh, the. Uh, you don't have JCL obviously on VM, so they provided two uh, Rex programs, uh, which um, uh, create the the object module and then one which creates the uh, load module, the executable to run, uh, and then there's one for uh, debugging. So the compiler is exactly the same. It was just produced from the exact same source code. So we should be able to run the exact same uh, software um, uh, that we did on MBS. So let's see if we have uh, Queen somewhere on... Uh, no, we do not. Uh, should be here. Oh, Queens, okay. So let's uh, do type queens pascal y you can see it's the exact same source code and uh, and uh, let's compile it uh, compilation is pretty simple and we can just do pascal uh, vs uh, queens pascal on disk y and so it invokes uh, pascal version 2.2 uh, exactly the same as we have in MBS. Source line 64, uh, 0.37 seconds. So that was a bit slower uh, than on uh, MVS. Even, but this is not running on the same machine. It's a little bit of a slower machine. Um, and the uh, total rate is uh, 10,000 lines per minute. There is a tradition when writing Pascal compilers to indicate how many source lines can be compiled per minute, calculate that. Other compilers don't do that, but uh, Pascal has always had this uh, tradition. One thing I should mention is that obviously Pascal was uh, invented by uh, Professor Niklas Wirth, who just died a couple of months ago, I think six months ago, uh, from the ETH University in Zurich. And, um, and uh, 
and then it evolved from there uh, in the late 60s into what we're looking at today and this as i mentioned it's uh, there's always tradition been there's always been tradition of outputting as part of the compilation step how many lines can the compiler processed per minute the other thing i want to mention is that uh, writing uh, compilers for pascal is uh, comparatively easy let's say than comparing to COBOL or C++ it's much simpler to write Pascal compilers the the uh, syntax is quite clear the number of keywords is limited uh, it's uh, not a very orthogonal language as for instance PL1 is and uh, and so there's many many compilers for Pascal out there and for a while uh, when I was in college it was kind of uh, one of the required uh, works for uh, master students of computer science was uh, to write a compiler for Pascal from scratch. So many people have this kind of experience. All right, so uh, we did this and now we can just say pask mod to produce a module, load module of uh, N Queens. Oh, what was it called? N Queens. And that's it. Now, before we can run this, we need to define, uh, we need to define uh, sys out as terminal. So that the term the sys out of this program goes to the terminal file def output um, terminal and uh, so we define where this we're kind of like the redirecting the standard out in uh, unix exactly the same thing and maybe that's where unix got it from uh, so we can now run queens oh as you can see here um, already did 9 10 and uh, I think that's uh, the end of it. Uh, we can interrupt and see Queens Pascal on Y. And oh, it goes all the way up to 13, 14. So let's finish it with with uh, with 11. And then we do the same. Oh, it's read only. <laughs> okay, so I have this disk as read only. So we have to do it and uh, but yeah we got the idea so if I execute this well, we have to do the file because I, I interrupted it so I have to do again the file definition file def uh, sys out terminal I think that's all I need actually uh, yep yeah. and so queens uh, no that wasn't enough file def sys out terminal And file dev output terminal. Yeah, it's the output that it wanted. It's because it's defined in the in the source code. Okay, so as uh, as you can see, uh, this compiler was quite versatile. It was used for very important. Uh, uh, innovation in the in the software world and in the computing world and uh, had wide-ranging impact on everything all the way down to the AOL messenger which of course the AOL messenger then had a lot of impact on other things uh, down the line and we can probably feel the impact of this all the way to so software that we use uh, all day on our devices uh, mobile phones and and uh, laptops etc i'm very glad that we were able to find this uh, important compiler and get it to work on uh, very old uh, system software such as MVS 3.8 and VM 370 and uh, I want to thank the person who uh, found it and uh, sent it to me and uh, uh, that's it for today if you have any questions about Pascal in general or if you want to play with the burned Opholzer open source compiler for MPS and for VM, uh, look at the uh, either the links in the description below this video or post some comments about uh, any experience that you have with uh, Pascal and what memories you have with Pascal and if you still use it today. Thank you very much for watching and goodbye.